So the last time you guys heard from me, I was leaving the Hustler live stream and I said the next day I would be at Commerce Casino playing 1020. Well, it's the next day, but this is not Commerce Casino. It's probably an upgrade though, at least in my opinion. It's the Bicycle Hotel and Casino. I actually went to the Commerce earlier today, but I'm just not the biggest fan of that place, to be honest with you guys. First of all, it was nine-handed, which I'm not a huge fan of. I think it's seven or eight over here. Anyway, without jumping too much into the whole commerce versus bicycle debate, there is a 5, 10, 20 going on in here, and that's what I'm gonna jump into. So that's all I gotta say for now. Oh, actually, no, it's not. Coming up in the next few days, I will be back at Hustler Casino with Rampage Poker himself. We're gonna be doing a live stream and then two meetup games on these dates. The first of which is a 2-3 no limit and after that it's gonna be a 5-5 no limit. Make sure you guys come out if you wanna hang out and uh, exchange some chips, should be a good time. All right, that's it for now. Let's get in there and play some cards. All right, guys, playing some 5, 10, 20 here at the bike. Max for this game was 3,000, so that's what I sat with. But sadly, only have 2,700 at the start of this next hand after losing a few small pots in the early rounds. In this one, action folds to me in late position and I look down at ace seven of diamonds. Decent looking cards, so I race to $50 before the button makes it 140. Action folds back to me and with this hand in particular, I think my preferred course of action is mostly just fold and occasionally put in the re-re-raise. This time I decided to do just that since this opponent had been fairly active and should have a good amount of mediocre hands here. So I bump it up to 350 and after some deliberation he decides on a flat call. Off to a flop which is pretty damn good all things considered. Jack 9-6 with two diamonds. Happy to continue betting here, so I make it $210. But then my opponent says that's not quite enough and kicks it up to $600. I can't really imagine a hand that plays this way, but I guess that doesn't really matter because our best option here is to just call either way. So I make the call and we're on the hunt for a diamond on the turn. No such luck, however, as the 10 of clubs rolls off. I check it over to him, but surprisingly this time he checks it back. So we get to see a free river card, which is one of those good ones. The four of diamonds. Quite the emotional roller coaster in this hand, but it's not over yet. Now it's time to decide whether or not to bet. After he raises the flop, but checks back the turn, I think it's most likely he's got a hand with some showdown value, which probably won't bet again now that the flush has come in. For that reason, I decide to just jam all in myself for my remaining $1,800 and hope that he makes the call. Huh? All in. What's your all in button? All in. All in. Call. So, a very good start to the session as we get a double up the very first hand. A little while later, there's a button open to 60 before it folds to me in the $20 blind, looking down at queen five of clubs. Good enough to defend versus a button open, so I call and we find top pair on queen 10 three. I check, she continues with a bet of 75, nothing to do here but call. Turn card improves us to trips, but still not doing anything besides checking and calling her bet of $180 this time. River card comes the Jack of Diamonds, which brings in the backdoor flush draw. So once again, I check it, but it seems she's finally done with this hand and quickly checks it back. I turn it over and we win. In the next one, there's a late position open to 60 and then the button makes it $200. Now action gets to me in the small blind and I look down at Ace Queen of Diamonds. It's a somewhat tricky situation as we're already facing a raise and a re-raise, but given that both of these players are in late position, I think ace-queen suited is slightly too strong to fold. 
Calling doesn't feel too great either though, especially out of position. So I decided to come in with a raise of my own to the tune of $510. Initial razor folds, but the button who made it $200 originally makes the call. At this point, he's only got around $1,000 left in his stack. So I'll most likely end up going all in on any flop. King 7-3 is no exception. Luckily, my opponent folds right away. Now, at this point, the table decides to turn on the seven deuce game. For those of you unfamiliar, it's simply a game where if you win a pot with seven deuce, everyone else at the table pays you a bounty. In this case, it was $50 per person. So in this next hand, when early position opens to 65 and I look down at seven deuce myself, I'm going after that bounty money. By no means am I an expert in this game, but I think the first aggressive option is slightly better. So I re-raise to $205. Action gets back to the initial raiser and he shows me how little I know about proper seven deuce strategy because now he makes it $500. <laughs> it seems we've encountered quite a strong hand, which unfortunately will bring an end to this seven deuce adventure. In this next hand, I open pocket sevens to $50 from early position and get called by the button and two players in the blinds. So four ways to a flop of queen, queen, four rainbow on which action checks all the way around. Turn is the 10 of spades, bringing in a backdoor flush draw. Both of the blinds check again, I check it also, but the button disagrees with all that and places a wager himself of $100. Both of the blinds fold and action gets back to me. Seems likely that the button could be betting a 10, or perhaps a slow played queen, but also it seems possible that he's trying to steal the pot after having it checked to him both on the flop and turn. So even though a fold here certainly seems fine, I decide to come along and see what happens on the river. River card is the king of hearts, and I check it over to him again. A bit surprisingly, he's not done betting, this time to the tune of $300. I find this river bet interesting because if he had a 10 or even a king, I predict he would just check it back and get to showdown. Feels unlikely he would value bet a hand like ace 10 or even king jack here. Based on that assumption, this bet represents either a very strong hand or just a stone cold bluff. And when that's the case, I usually get pretty curious. So I decide to make a somewhat light call here. But it turns out that we're good, as he shows ace three of spades. Just kidding. He had pocket tens. Nice hand, sir. Let's move along to the next one, where there's an early position open to 65, and a call in late position. I'm in the small blind with jack ten of hearts, definitely a hand I want to play, but not really looking to call in the small blind. So I decided to make it $360. Interestingly enough, the big blind cold calls this raise and the early position opener comes along as well. So three ways out of position to an action looking flop of Jack 10 eight with two clubs. Whew. Even though we flop a very disguised top two pair, this board is often gonna be a lot better for the callers than the razor. So I opt to check this one and see what they do, but action checks all the way around. So we're off to a turn which is one of the worst in the deck the nine of spades. I check it again. This time the big blind bets $525. Early position player folds and it's back to me. It seems very unlikely that the big blind is bluffing into two opponents who could very easily have a straight. So what looked like a fun situation at first results in a frustrated fold. A few minutes later, I pick up ace king on the button I open a 50 and then the small blind raises to 200. Action gets back to me and ace king seems like a very easy candidate to continue piling money into this pot with. So I make it $500 to go. And then he says, I raise again before sliding out $1,400. Now bear in mind guys that it's not always easy for me to convey player types to the camera. Sometimes there's table flow dynamics between players that are just difficult to put into words. All that to say, against some opponents, ace-king is just an easy fold here. Against some others, it's a call. And against 
a very select few, it's an all-in for $4,500. This player was one of those select few. He'd been extremely loose and aggressive the entire session. Plus, something told me he was looking for some revenge after the Ace-7 of Diamonds hand. So I decided to send it in. Not really a play I would almost ever advocate for this many big blinds, but like I said, this was a special circumstance. After thinking it over for quite some time and announcing that he's ahead of Ace King, my opponent mucks it. So it seems we got a fold from Queens or Jacks and got to take down $1,400 in the process. Not too bad of a result. Shortly after, we meet Ace King once again, this time in early position. I make it $50 to go before a pretty tight player in late position raises to $180. Could go either way here between calling and raising again, but once the button cold calls this $180 raise, I'm definitely leaning more towards a re-raise since this hand performs much better heads up. So I make it $580 to go, but unfortunately here's some unwanted news from my opponent in late position as he announces all in for 3 k Button folds, now we have a decision on our hands, and this is just a perfect example of how each spot can be approached differently based on whatever player type you're up against. In this case, our opponent is Charlie, who's one of the Live at the Bite commentators. He's a pretty snug player. For that reason, I think this hand is mostly just a fold, as we're probably up against either Ace-King or a very big pocket pair, which isn't the best situation. So I just muck it. Turns out, he actually had Ace-King himself. That's what he told me later on. Oh well, still not too mad about my fold there. A few rounds later, I look down at ace-8 of hearts from early position and open it up to 50. Player on my direct left calls, but everyone else folds. Heads up to a nice looking flop, 10-8-6 with two hearts. Feeling pretty good with middle pair and a flush draw, but at the same time, it's not really a board I want to be betting too much on. So I start with a check and he bets 75. No point in raising, folding seems psychotic, so I make the call. Turn isn't too concerning, it's the queen of diamonds, shouldn't really change anything aside from perhaps improving some of his bluffs to top pair. I check it again, this time he bets $225, another standard call for us. River is another red card, but it's a diamond. Once again I check it, already pondering whether or not I'll call a third bet, but he quickly checks it back. Now I'm expecting to win a small chunk of the time if that. This time is not to be, as my opponent flips over ace-10. I guess it's only fair that, in the end, ace-10 beats ace-8, right? Anyway, shortly after this hand, I decided it was time to get going. I hope you guys enjoyed the hands. Well, that went about as good as you can hope for, I think. I was into the game for $3,000, never needed to add on, which in and of itself is quite the rare event. Ended up cashing out for $5,333. That's two successful evenings here in Los Angeles. Always a good time coming out here, change it up, change the scenery, and uh, of course, dive into that LA poker action. Today was a great example of that. A lot of big hands, a lot of weird spots, a lot of characters at the table, and it makes for an overall entertaining vlog. Or so I think, you guys be the judge. But that's it for tonight, guys. As always, thank you so much for the continued support. Thanks if you watched this video all the way to the end. If you gave it a thumbs up, I really appreciate it. And I look forward to the Hustler meetup games that I have coming up with Rampage Poker. Hopefully I get to meet at least a few of you guys there. I'm starving, so I'm gonna go get some dinner and then head back home. Until next time, good luck at the tables. Peace.